uh, being believing you, Paul. Successful. How are we looking? Yeah, I see the uh, Drupal Global 2020. Okay, let's get rid of the. Uh... Are you seeing this chat window or not? Or do I do I only see that? No, that's part of Zoom, so it hides it, doesn't it? Right, cool. Okay. Then. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I was going to do a, a talk tonight um, about Drupal 9 in terms of um, readying your projects for it. I've, I've been kind of keeping a, an eye on this now for about six months because I'm um, wanting to start working, putting a, a distribution together. So I've, um, I've been working with lots of different modules and evaluating them and so on and um, a lot of the final decision as to what I end up using will be dictated by what's ready and stable for Drupal 9 so I've been I've had quite an interest on it for a few months um, so anyway the talk is called readying projects for Drupal 9 and it's in particular um, about my experience of using the upgrade status uh, module We'll say, uh, for those that don't know me personally, I'm, I'm not a coder, I don't do any programming or write any PHP. So I mean, everything I do is from a, a site building perspective um, and so on. Um, so it's, it's, the talk's very much based on a, a practical level about sort of, you know, putting sites together for Drupal 9 with modules at work rather than necessarily um, adapting and updating modules themselves. So I do do a bit of sort of patch testing and, and so on and so forth as um, uh, will, will become clear. So um, with that said, let's move on to um, first slide. So Drupal 8, um, to Drupal 9 has been promised as the as the easiest upgrade ever. Um, I've been using Drupal since the late, really late stages of Drupal 6. I started properly with Drupal 7. So I didn't need to update any Drupal sites from one major version to another prior to that. Um, but I have found it quite challenging to um, upgrade sites from uh, seven to eight. Um, not in my case, it's not so much working on one project and just needing to upgrade the one project. I've got sort of thirty or forty different sites, and you know it's a big deal having I mean, to upgrade thirty or forty sites to a new version of Drupal. And uh, um, I found it easiest really just to kind of rebuild them in it in many cases because it's quite a challenging thing so in the past doing Drupal upgrades has been quite expensive um, and by that I mean you know the big effort of time and energy um, and potentially financial expense as well if, if wages need to be paid and so on um, it's a big old it's a big job really it's much less so now as Drupal 8 has evolved new APIs and features were added in a, in a backwards compatible way um, and Drupal 9 was actually built inside of Drupal 8 so much of Drupal 9 core is is unchanged as I understand it there are one or two um, changes there and uh, I'd be interested to know more about those in the questions and answer afterwards um, however the Drupal 8 symphony dependencies are nearing end of life so an upgrade now is required. Uh, Drupal 9 removes backwards compatibility and uses the latest uh, Symfony components, PHP versions and MySQL versions. Um, so in terms of Drupal versions, um, Drupal 9 was re released at the same time as Drupal 8.9 um, and Drupal 8.9, 8.9 will become the long-term support version now until November 2021, which is also the same date as I understand it, unless it's been extended for Drupal 7 as well. 
So um, even though Drupal 9 is ready uh, now, and certainly you can, you can start building new sites with Drupal 9 straight away, there's also a good overlap period to get Drupal 8 projects up to speed on Drupal 9 because um, it's going to be supported until November 21, at the earliest, I suppose. Um, in terms of Drupal 9 uh, module compatibility, um, in the past, as I understand it, modules had to be largely rewritten to support new Drupal versions. Um, but for Drupal 9, this isn't usually necessary. They, and in many cases, they just need to be made uh, quite a simple modification to make them uh, Drupal 9 compatible. Um, one requirement for compatibility is that there's a new key that needs to go into a module's info YAML file called core version requirement. And this is um, really a, 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 a requirement just to be able to install a module on a Drupal 9 website. Um, the core version requirement also now supports semantic versioning for modules as implemented by the Composer project. And there in the blue, we've got a couple of lines of code that need to be inserted into uh, the info, uh, modules info.yaml file to make them compliant with Drupal 9. Uh, there are two lines there. My understanding is that, is that the first line, core 8, which is, uh, is, you know, that already exists anyway, that's not necessarily required for a, a module that was only intended to work from Drupal 8.8 .8 onwards, but it is a requirement for uh, modules that support earlier versions of Drupal. And another thing that um, the semantic versioning uh, allows for is for Drupal to, sorry, for Drupal modules to support multiple versions of Drupal. So um, currently, uh, many modules now can be made compatible with both Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Beneath that, the, the link there on drupal.org. Um, that's where you can find more information about the, the core version requirement, ins and outs um, for upgrading your modules. In addition to the core version requirement, other things that uh, module maintainers may need to do, uh, before, before going into this, I should say that the, I think it's uh, estimated that a good third of all modules for Drupal 8 only need the core version requirement uh, change making to the info.yaml file. And that's enough just by itself to, to get modules updated so that they're compatible for Drupal 9. Um, for the other modules, um, it also is a question of updating references to old dependencies, deprecated dependencies and deprecated older uh, APIs. Now I don't know anything at all about APIs and what have you and I'm hoping John uh, Cook, our resident Drupal core module API, batch API <laughs> core maintainer might be able to give us a little bit more information on that side of thing. But just on the dependency side of thing, a really simple example is that um, uh, jQuery UI, which has been in, in, in Drupal 8 certainly from the beginning, um, has been deprecated in, in Drupal 8 and it's removed completely from Drupal 9. So any modules that require any of the Drupal UI components that, aren't, that haven't been replaced in Drupal 9 by um, native JavaScript may now have to be dependent on uh, contributed modules. So um, a good example of that that uh, a lot of people will be familiar with is the field group module which um, does need or did use uh, jQuery UI tabs for doing uh, tabbed you know back end well, well both back end and front end uh, UI um, and jQuery accordions for example. Um, and that's a simple example of a, of a dependency that needs updating. Um, a replacement for jQuery tabs is in Drupal 9 core, but a replacement for accordions isn't. So if you wanted to use the accordion part of 
um, the field, field group module. Um, the, the maintainers have need to make a soft dependency on um, the jQuery UI accordion module, which is now in Contrib. And in addition to um, tabs that I've mentioned and, and accordions, there are other um, jQuery UI uh, modules that are now in Contrib for alternative date pickers and a variety of um, different things, really. So uh, the talk mainly is about the upgrade status module, um, my experience of using it, and about what it is, what it does, and, and how it can be useful in getting you ready for the upgrade, really. Um, so in, in terms of um, what, it, what it exists for, um, it's obviously to help you prepare your projects for Drupal 9. It's based on a command line tool called Drupal Check, which was authored by Matt Glamour of Sintaro, um, previously also known as uh, Commerce Guys. And it runs through a few different things to determine how ready your project is for Drupal 9. Um, first of all, it checks whether you, which version of Drupal you're using, um, Drupal 8 or Drupal 8. Dot nine. It checks to see whether your development environment, your system, meets Drupal 9's system requirements. It scans all of your contrib and custom modules together with themes. So in other words, it scans the, the profiles folder, the modules folder, and the themes folder. Um, it will go on to advise of any projects which don't have the basic um, correct core version requirement. And it also runs lots and lots of checks. I think a lot of them based around PHP stand and other things to identify any other compatibility issues with, um, with your modules and to a lesser extent your themes. So installing and running the upgrade status module is, is no, fairly straightforward. It does have to be installed with Composer um, because it um, also pulls in a number of other uh, PHP dependencies, one of which is the, the Drupal check library that I mentioned in the previous slide. And also worth mentioning is that you may need to upgrade your Drupal core version because Drupal status um, will only work on Drupal core versions 8.7.7 .7 or later. You then go to install the, mo the module in the normal way, either through the UI or with Drush. And then you uh, go over to the report section of your admin menu and uh, go down to the upgrade status report. And that will, this is the main sort of interface of the module. From here, it will list all of your modules, custom modules, contrib modules. They also look at your themes as well. Um, but on first sight, it doesn't give you any information. You have to then scan uh, which projects you want looking at to, to create an audit, to do a report. Um, you can either scan these individually or you can choose to scan them all in one go. Um, if you're scanning all and you've got a few modules, it might take a little bit, go and put the kettle on or something, um, but it, it, it doesn't take so long to do it. Um, after then viewing the report, you can decide um, for yourself which modules and themes um, are already compatible and, and which may need further investigation. Um, and it's then a question of diving into the, into the issue queues, um, looking at discussions, uh, maybe applying patches, or well, actually often just updating to the most recent version is sufficient actually. Um, you might need to uh, install some patches, um, perhaps just for testing or, or just to you know, get things working for you. Uh, and at this time, as well as just, um, you know, once you've done that, you should run the scans again and upgrade status will give you uh, an update of uh, your changes. Um, it's also worth at this stage just, you know, checking that the modules, if they have been updated or patched, just checking that they do actually work and do what they're supposed to do, make sure that they haven't broken anything. And by and large, I found it to be, uh, and I found the patches and the updates to be largely successful. But I've had a couple of failures where 
things didn't go quite according to plan. Um, I also made a, a point of uh, I was I was I was wanting to sort of look at all the modules that I generally use for my projects, not necessarily all, all at once, but it's it's quite a long list. It's kind of up to up to ninety odd modules that I use quite frequently. Um, so I I also make it made a point of keeping a spread, spreadsheet just for keeping notes, putting links into the relevant um, issues and so on, so that I knew where I was at any given time. Um, so when it comes to like reviewing the project pages on Drupal.org, things to look for in terms of, um, you know, just working out whether a module is compatible or not. Um, well, down at the bottom where you see the various releases, if, if, if the, the module states requires Drupal 8 or 9, this is usually a good sign. Um, one thing that I will say is, even if a module isn't fully compatible, it does need to have the core version requirement in place before you can install it with Composer on a Drupal 9 site. Um, so even if it's not ready, you can't install it on a Drupal 9 unless the core version requirement part of the uh, is in place. What I mean to say is uh, just enlarging on that. Let's say you wanted to get a, a module into Drupal 9 and then patch it so that it's properly compatible. You're not going to be able to patch it with Composer at least. With Git you probably could, but with Composer you're not going to be able to patch it in Drupal 9 unless it's got the core version requirement in place. That's been my finding anyway. Uh, and I'd be interested to know if other people, you know, know different or whether I've misunderstood anything there. Another thing when looking at the module project page, project page is, is just look for uh, modules that have been very recently updated. I mean, literally, you know, in the last month or so. Um, if not the main release, take a look also at, at the dev versions. Um, again, a, a big clue, if, if, there's, if there's been recent activity, it's almost certainly um, connected with Drupal 9 compatibility, um, based on what I've seen at least anyway. When you go into the actual project issue queues, the, um, the issues that you'll need to be looking for will usually have titles like um, Drupal 9 compatibility or Drupal 9 readiness. Another title you'll uh, I forget the exact title actually but um, you'll, you'll figure this out another one that you might come across is automated testing and patches for uh, Drupal 9 which is being done by an initiative by the um, uh, on Drupal.org using automated testing and automated uh, patch creation which isn't really part of the talk but I, I guess we will we'll probably cover that in the questions and, and answers Whilst I said earlier on that um, a lot of modules, you know, up to a third of them just need minor changes, perhaps just often just involving inserting a single line into a single file. Um, some modules will have multiple issues, especially for big projects like uh, group. Uh, now, speaking of group, one thing that I did discover, and this is well worth being aware of if you do use it, is that between um, a release, release candidate four and the current dev, which is kind of getting ready for release candidate six, uh, there's a breaking change. In other words, if you don't upgrade to release candidate five first before applying uh, the dev release, perhaps for the purposes of te testing patches for compatibility, you will break your site. Um, it'll stop, well certainly the group element of it will stop working and you'll get drush errors and all sorts of things. So, so if you're using group anyway and if you plan to test some dev releases, make sure you upgrade um, to release candidate 5 before doing any tests. If you're hoping to go from 4 to dev or 4 to release candidate 6 when it comes out, directly and skip a release, you will encounter problems. Getting back to the issue queues, in addition to the uh, titles of Drupal 9 compatibility or Drupal 9 readiness, most issue queues can also be filtered with the tag Drupal 9 compatibility. 
and uh, this can be um, especially useful for these larger projects that might have several Drupal 9 compatibility issues running alongside each other. Um, I should say, you know, also, um, as well as just using this as a, an opportunity to get ready for Drupal 9, it's also a good opportunity for um, getting involved, for earning issue and commit credit. Um, frankly, there's a lot of low hanging fruit out there. You know, just one of these many modules that just need the single um, core requirement putting in, for example, um, is a very easy route to earn lots of commit credit if um, particular module maintainers haven't quite got up to speed on that yet. And they're happy to take, um, you know, somebody's patch that they've committed and uh, to get their module ready, you know, for Drupal, Drupal 9. So lots of low hanging fruit there if you, if you want to build up your Drupal profile. So demo time, um, not so much a demo, just showing you a few screens and um, showing you how it works. So I'm going to come out now of my slideshow. And uh, how do I get rid of that? Pull that down. So, um, okay, so here's the, the upgrade status project page on um, Drupal.org. This was originally created back in 2008. So I guess this project has been used for you know major version upgrades before Drupal 9, probably for Drupal 8 and Drupal 7 and, and so on, maybe even Drupal 6, I don't know. Um, it, 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 it's very well documented. There's lots of information on the page, not only covering installation stuff and so on, um, but also providing a breakdown of exactly what tests it runs and what it's looking for when it's um, scanning all of the various modules. And yeah, it's, you know, there's lots of information there. And, and here when we look at the release, here's an example of how the multi-version requirements can be stated. It might say from 8.7.7, .7. sometimes it might say that something's compatible with 8 and 9. Um, it can vary from uh, project to project. Um, as mentioned before, it has to be installed by with Composer. Uh, again, that's made pretty clear. And if, you, if you're new to Composer, there's some um, straightforward commands listed there for you. Now then, once you've got it installed, you, you, you still need to go in through your module bit and install it um, as, as normal or do that with Drush. And then you'll, be, um, you'll need to get yourself over to the report section and down here to upgrade status. When you do so, you'll present, be presented with this um, screen. Now, um, initially, It'll, it'll kind of just be blank. You've then got to, as, as mentioned before, you've got to either individually scan your projects or select them all to be scanned, and then it'll come back with some results. So this is um, replicating kind of one of my development sites where I, I just bunged all the modules that I use. Um, so there's, I mean, it's quite a number here, you know, up to 80 or 90 or something. And, and then I ran a scan, and this, this screen represents really the results of the first scan that I got back. So if we go through this, it's, it's checked what version of core I've got installed. Well, I've updated to the latest version before running the scans. Um, it's telling me that my, uh, the PHP version that I'm running is uh, compatible, uh, database, Apache. Um, and then here it's telling me that, um, the version of Drush that I've got isn't adequate, isn't suitable for Drupal uh, 9, um, and that I need to be running um, Drush 10. So that's going to be one of the, the first updates that I do um, so that I can uh, you know, use Drush properly um, with, uh, with Drupal 9. We then get into the individual modules that I've got installed, where it quotes the, the updates, quotes the versions, and as we can see here, if I just sort of slowly scroll down the list, there's lots of red 
and there's lots of amber. Red denoting where there are actual errors, meaning that, you know, no matter what, this will not work with um, triple nine. And errors denoting further things that may need doing with the module. Um, even if you've got warnings, it doesn't mean necessarily that those modules won't work with Drupal 9. Uh, often those warnings can be uh, concerned with internal deprecations for the module itself, rather than compatibility with Drupal 9. So if we just take a look at admin toolbar, which of course we all know, um, quick look at that. Um, after doing a scan, uh, it's telling us that we've got three warnings. And if we open this up here, um, it tells us what these warnings are. And in this particular case, all this module needs is the core version requirement sticking into the info.yaml file. Uh, the warning appears three times because it also applies to some sub-modules that also belong to um, the, the admin toolbar module suites. Beneath it, there's also some export options, which is really just allows you to get this information out in a, in a usable form. Uh, the exporter text option is very useful um, because you can then copy and paste that um, into uh, Drupal.org issue queues um, if you've got any queries. So I'm just having a quick look at the chat and just see if there's any questions. Just, just bear with me a second. Um, I just posted a link to uh, a useful website that Acquia have set up called Drup uh, Deprecation Status. All oh, right, okay. How does, how does that work, Phil? What's that about? Uh, it just shows you all, a list of all the modules and whether it needs work or not, you know. Um, Rather than needing necessarily to do your own scans? Uh, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, cool. Um, it was a good, good indicator. So it, we looked at the group module just then, and it's, it seems to be compatible at least. Um, but some interesting stats there as well. So uh, if you look at the errors, it says that uh, 7,090 sites uh, just need this change that you're looking at right in front of you here. Yeah. Change. So just need the, the core version requirement. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to get, you know, earn some commit credit, there's lots of low hanging fruit there just by creating patches to do that. Dead easy. Uh, good. Okay. The group thing. Um, I'll cover that a bit more in questions and answers if there's, I'm just looking at these other comments in the chat about group and how it's saying it's compatible. Yeah, it, it kind of is, but there are banana skins. That's, that, that's all I'm saying really on the group thing. So um, just come out of admin, uh, sorry, I'm just going to close this modal there about admin toolbar. I'm just going to jump across to the admin toolbar page. And we can see that since I originally ran these scans, Admin Toolbar has been uh, brought up to date and uh, here we can see um, that it's compliant with Drupal 8.8 .8 through and including uh, Drupal 9. This was on the 24th of March, there has been further work done since as you can see in the, uh, the dev uh, version. So going back to um, the next upgrade, the next module to uh, talk about to provide some examples. If I can just remember what it is. The uh, yeah, sorry, the field group example um, is another one that's um, good for the purposes of examples. So field group is widely used um, for obviously grouping fields um, for theming purposes for wrapping a, a collection of fields maybe with some CSS classes or so on and it's also used for both front-end and back-end for just organizing a page or a UI with tabs or accordions or um, collapsible field sets or whatever it's, it's very widely used so here this is this is a somewhat bigger um, thing and uh, just to reiterate again this is a uh, scans that were taken quite some time ago these results are not representative of what you'll find today. Uh, but if we look there at, at field group, we've got a lot more to digest here. Um, now these 
items here that are highlighted in blue. Um, these are items which can be fixed automatically with some of the uh, RET uh, patches that have been committed to most of the issue queues by now. So they, 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 they can all, there are, there are solutions all ready for anything highlighted in blue. Uh, for these items highlighted in red, these are more than likely going to be to do with deprecations um, or, or, or dependencies. And we can see that a lot of these are connected, in this particular example, are connected with uh, tests and so on. And then at the bottom, we can see, yeah, it also had the, the core version requirement thing that needed attention, not just for the main module, but also for some sub modules as well. Field group migrate, for example. And here, uh, this brings us back to the example of that I mentioned when we had the original slides up uh, about if you want to use the accordion feature of field group, um, it'll also be necessary to install the contrib jQuery UI accordion module because that functionality is now deprecated, sorry, is, is no longer, not deprecated, it's no longer in Drupal 9 core. So uh, quite a number of, uh, you know, quite a lot to, to, to deal with there in, in terms of just upgrading one module to be, to be ready. Um, I'm going to flip now to the field group uh, issue queue. Just go back here a moment. I'm just going to reload this page. So here's the, the main uh, issue. Oops. Click on not what I want it to be. Let me just go to there. Let me go to there. So we're here we're back into the, the main issue queue for the field group module. And you know it's a busy issue queue. There's lots going on. So I mentioned earlier on in the slides that you can also search an issue queue by tag. So if we just type in um, Drupal, well, you know, right there at the top, um, you've got Drupal 9 compatibility. So if I uh, filter down on that tag, I can see that for the field group module, there are five different issues discussing uh, the various uh, things needed to make field group compatible with uh, Drupal 9. Um, sorry, the six, one of which is a duplicate. And, and you know, all of these modules are, are dealing with different things to do with the, you know, the compatibility. So if you're assessing your projects, you might, you know, especially if it's one of these big projects, you might need to just visit a number of different issues just to see where progress is or see whether there's any patches that need testing or you know if you've got any experience or feedback to um, help. Um, if we click on this particular issue, this is um, an issue that I created just querying one of these um, warning messages that I didn't understand. Um, I mentioned a um, couple of tabs back that there's an option to export the um, uh, errors and warning messages out as text. And in doing so, that allows you to then um, paste that within some code tabs and just drop this particular error message straight into the issue queue in a very readable, understandable manner. And in this particular case, I was just querying what's this formatter accordion thing all about. And uh, one of the maintainers has come back and clarified it and saying, yeah, because. Um, jQuery accordion is, is removed from Drupal 9, you, uh, you'll get an advisory in Drupal, sorry, you won't get a warning if you're patching against Drupal 8, but if you're patching against Drupal 9, um, you'll get a, a message advising that um, if you want to use the accordion functionality of field group, um, that you should go and install the new contrib module. Um, I said that I kept a spreadsheet, just a bit like this really, just so I could keep tabs of all of the modules that I was wanting to look at. When they passed, I would flag them accordingly, any notes that I had, and a link to the, issue, the particular issues that I was following. So that, you know, quite a lot going on here, just so I knew where I was um, over the last uh, kind of couple of months in 
just assessing, um, you know, my, my project suitability for upgrading to Drupal 9. Um, now, why is this in here? Autocomplete Deluxe, let me just remind myself. Yeah, I was talking about issue credit um, and commit credit if you're committing patches and so on. Um, here's an example of how that works just in my sort of business of going testing stuff for my own convenience um, with the autocomplete deluxe module. Um, I, a patch had been posted up for review, which um, I looked at and reported back that it was passing tests. And so, you know, just out of doing something for my own benefit, ended up getting some commit credit, which is buried down in here somewhere, um, for uh, helping this module um, along its way um, in, in its journey towards Drupal 9 readiness. Now, fast forward to kind of yesterday, really. And this is... Uh, so this is this is really just come about over the last couple of months. And realistically, it's accelerated over the last two weeks. You know, most of the actions happened in the last two weeks. So this is where I am now. So just uh, looking back to there, a couple of months back, lots of red, lots of amber. You know, work needed all around. And look at that today. Um, well, I've addressed the drush requirement thing there, and now we've just got loads and loads and loads and loads of green. Um, some of this is based on full releases, which I've just been able to install and they're just um, straight away working. Um, some of these I have patched. So um, in my spreadsheet, I've made a note that they are patches, they're not full releases yet, but things are coming along nicely. Um, I'll just expand. Oops. Uh, I'll just expand this custom projects thing here. Uh, sorry, no, well, that's not relevant. Well, just I was just revisiting for a moment. Some modules, if they haven't had the core version requirement thing done, as I mentioned earlier, you can't necessarily you can't compose them and allow you to install them in Drupal nine. So in some cases, I've patched modules in Drupal seven and then brought them over to a custom folder in my modules directory just to see if if, if the patches have, have worked out in Drupal 9 and in most cases they have but it doesn't mean that they those modules are fully compatible and ready yet. Um, scroll down the list you know lots of is, lots of situations now where they're not showing um, any errors. I do recommend that once just just getting a positive test result isn't sufficient necessarily in most cases it's worked out nicely but i think it's worth actually physically checking those modules that you upgraded just to make sure that they work uh, and one example of a module which has still got issues here is the better exposed filters module there are a number of warnings about it and better exposed filters is one of these things that actually one of these modules that actually has dependencies sometimes on other modules and so um you know, things can, things can percolate down, you know, there might be a problem that isn't, you know, isn't owned by the module, but it's certainly affected by other modules. So certainly make a point of testing modules as well as just running the test. But overall, you know, that's, that's a pretty good picture by and large. Yes, there's still some red tier group, um, even RC5 still showing lots of errors and warnings here. Um, JSON IPA extras, where these are big projects and there's some big hitter maintainers, you know, I just haven't bothered, you know, looking further because they're obviously dealing with the issues and they're on top and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to be of any help in the issue queues there. So, you know, I'm just banking that these will come good um, in, in their own uh, time um, before they're ready. One of the things worth mentioning here, however, is and here is uh, an example sorry not an example next slide excuse me a minute i'm just getting 
recurring. Yeah, sorry, it is in this slide here. This thing. one module that you got here, which I use quite a lot, the recurring dates module, and there's also a widget module for recurring returning dates. These are returning errors, even though they are actually ready. So, so what's going on here? Uh, well, if we look at the um, the project page for recurring dates, um, here there's some uh, advice that you know. Um, this is ready for Drupal 9 and uh, it, you know, it's, it's drilling down and, and providing lots of good information and the maintainer of uh, recurring dates module is actually not Frando anymore, it's DPI who's a, a good maintainer, um, often does things in his own way, I think that's fair to say and I don't think he'd object to me saying that and in this particular instance DPI has decided on a slightly different uh, route in that he has decided not to make this particular module um, compatible with multiple versions of Drupal, but rather that he's created a new branch, the three branch, which is going to be the branch that's going to be compatible with Drupal 8. And the, the two branch, um, and actually there's a one branch as well, obviously, will... Uh, only be compatible with Drupal 7. And in making this change as well, we can see here, he's also switched over to the uh, semantic versioning for modules, which uh, I guess most modules will do, you know, in, in, in the next few months or weeks or, or whatever. So instead of uh, the versioning being 8.x hyphen version, We've got a semantic versioning, which is now being applied to the module. And here we can see in this instance that that only applies to Drupal 9. And then just the last uh, screen before rounding off. Here I've taken the same body of modules, but rather than testing them on Drupal 8.9, I'm actually testing them now, uh, a double check, if you will, on an actual Drupal 9 site. And again, pleased to say, uh, lots of green, lots of green ticks, lots of compatibility. I'm still working on this list, so it's not complete uh, yet. I'm probably two thirds of the way through it. But one interesting uh, observation here is if we just flip back to the, the upgrade for, um, where was it? Uh, the upgrades for, so we're back to the 8.9 site here. And we're seeing under the status, we're seeing sort of no known errors, no known errors, or a, a small number of errors. But when I'm testing these on Drupal 9, all of a sudden the error and warning count across the board has shot right up, uh, which confused me at first um, until I got down to the actual listing for the upgrade status module itself, where it says that it works on Drupal 9 even if there is no point yet, um, and goes on to list uh, uh, an issue about making the upgrade status module um, compatible for Drupal 9, in particular with regard to Drupal 9 tests. So if we take a closer look at these warnings, we'll see that they're all really applying to tests of one sort or another, rather than uh, Drupal 9 module uh, readiness compatibility. So that's my experience with um, Drupal 9 readiness and assessing my projects um, uh, readiness for Drupal 9 and all the modules you use. I think it's quite a good picture. There's still um, some work to do for sure. Uh, but overall, I think it's quite a good, um, a good picture really, over and out. And I'll stop sharing my screen. How do I do that? You are sharing, stop sharing. So I'm back in the room. Questions?
No, good. <laughs> Probably not the right person to answer them anyway. I was just wondering about the uh, classy things. Is that still in Drupal 9? Sorry, it's about the, the what, so? The classy theme, because the Drupal site that I built was the theme was based around the classy theme that's in Drupal Core for Drupal 8. Is that still in Drupal 9? Let me just have a look. Taken away sure. at some point. Share my screen again. Let's have a quick look. I think classy is, isn't it? Um, let's just double check. Back to... Yeah, I think it is. Well, really, no I want to here in, in here, don't I? So, look at me Drupal 9 site. Probably, and uh, core themes. I mean, classy is there in Drupal 9. Yes. So, you should have a fairly smooth... Um, transit, I would have thought, certainly on the theming side of things. No, thanks for that. Yeah, it's just not going to be the, the recommended thing, is it? I think they will get rid of it eventually, but you're talking maybe a year or so down the line. And since it's triple nine compatible already, you can just copy it and keep it anyway. Just move it into a contrib theme folder. Cool. One interesting thing about that uh, upgrade status is um, you know, it lists out all the errors and everything. It'd be really nice if it could show you alternate modules that do similar things as well. Because you know, you're like, and about field collections. Like, yeah. We've, we've completely ditched field collections for paragraphs. Right. I think, and I think most people haven't, haven't they really. In fact, is, doesn't the field collection project page sort of say we're on our last legs here and you probably should be looking at paragraphs. But I agree that, that such a facility would be useful. Um, that'd be quite a big project though, wouldn't it? Um, you'd need maintainers to be able to, um, some sort of method of being able to submit information about um, yeah, you'd need to get uh, Drupal to add a specific, you know, like a similar projects field. A bit like the ecosystem it. field. Yeah, and then you could say like, okay, this is like this, so uh, why don't you try this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I found it quite an encouraging process, really. Um, I'm sure there'll be obstacles to climb but it's um you know if it all works it'll be uh, it'll be good anybody else started looking at it yet uh yeah i took a look um at my own website and uh it's got the wrong version of php installed on the server so <laughs> i need to start upgrading that first right uh, and then yeah i think all the modules are fine it's just that just stopped me really. So yeah, you what need to be uh, seven point three is the minimum. And what was the name of that website again, Phil? Uh, Hashbang Code, I think. Probably. Shameless <laughs> plug. <Yeah. laughs> the sponsored full, section. Full of useful things. Is anyone else running Drupal nine? On the call. Yeah, I had a question about about Drupal nine. If you um, if you go ahead and just go install module, go composer install module, a uh, composer require in Drupal nine. What are the variations of things that are likely to happen if it's a module that's um, at different stages of readiness? For nine? Yeah. Will it, uh, will it just install the eight version or what? No, no, well. If you've got a module that's incompatible, um, you'll get a big long, they call it a backtrace, where it's listing all of the chain of stuff going wrong. Yeah. So you, you'll get a big long backtrace and you'll have to sort of look through it, but um, about halfway down, it'll, it'll tell you the obvious, what you tried to just do isn't gonna work. Um, uh -huh. It'll say solution, don't install what you're trying to install. Um, so it, it, it's, I think a lot of it's got to do with having that, that core version requirement in there in the first place for, um, for, for Composer even to sort of want to shake hands with it. Yeah, um, of course. It, 
if if you've ever had the yeah the normal composer problem about dependency um, clashes, if you've seen those before, Nigel, I suppose it looks similar to that. Okay, yeah. it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I think if you're starting with Drupal nine, if you're not faced with needing to to upgrade projects from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9. I think you can jump straight in with building with Drupal 9 from day one. There's plenty of um, compatibility um, yeah. for you to be able to you know, do really quite advanced stuff. Um, well, that's what I've done. Straight it's been a, a really painless experience so far, but I imagine as I get down into needing more and more specific modules and edge cases, it's going to be uh, difficult because of the lack of readiness. Maybe so. I, I, I think the clue is in the issue queues. Um, you know, if, there, if, if in the issue queue, you know, it's being actively discussed by people, um, you probably don't have that long to wait. I've got a couple of modules that I like using a great deal and I think are really good modules, but they've just been neglected. Or certainly, you know, recently they have. Um, one of which is the custom publishing options module, uh, um, and that's there's just nothing happening there at all, and and it's not a straightforward thing that can be resolved with the automated patches. There's you know there's, there's, it needs a developer's eye on it, you know, rather than somebody who's poking about and just you know trying to see what works and what doesn't. Um, so I think these are there are situations where there will be. Um, problems if, if if maintainers have lost interest or or perhaps moved on completely. Um, but certainly all of the main modules, I don't think there'll be any trouble with. You know, your top 100, uh, I don't think there'll be any problem at all with. John, have you got anything that you can tell us about the uh, at a higher level, sort of developer level, on the uh, API deprecations. Um, not not really. Um, most of the most of the stuff that's there uh, is covered with um, the upgrade status module. It basically all the all the warnings and errors basically tell you what you need to do, need, what you need to do to fix it. Um, the the thing that I've noticed is the rector um, process. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't know about. Hence the blue stuff, the blue stuff in the list, and uh, then all the red stuff underneath. Um, but it's still not entirely accurate uh, with fixing it as well. Um, I found one way it was doing trying, trying to change a Drupal set message. And it said it fixed it, but it basically just put in a comment above it saying, you need to sort this out. I've got no idea what to do with it. Um, that's, that's something that I've, I've found. Um, Has anyone tried to use it with a module that isn't on Drupal.org? Um, are you talking about a custom module? Yeah, a custom private module. Yeah, it still runs the checks on it. And it, yeah, I it, still, it, still tells you, it still tells you what needs doing if, if, if it's incompatible. I've, I've got a custom module that does, makes some tweaks to admin toolbar. And, uh, you know, now, now that it's run the tests again, some, I think I'll be able to have a, a stab at, uh, at least, uh, you know, making, making those compatible. So yes, it, it, it does work with custom modules. So have we got any um, matters arising or topics of conversation, any community news, any, 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 any updates, any, any gossip? Uh, NWDOG is on next month again. Yeah. So that's the, the Drupal user group. Uh, should be the 14th of July. Okay, I'll put that in my diary because I got that wrong last time. Uh, I think we're going to have a talk on unit testing, so uh, a bit more about mocking uh, and the sort of what's the, what's the mocking system in Drupal called? Begins with P. 
Uh, is it Phantom? I have no idea, Matt. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't so, know there was one. Maybe come along. There is. Jumple's uh, got a marking <laughs> system. That <laughs> <laughs> looks better than you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're... <laughs> Where's Mr. Joomla when you need him? I'll uh, pop a link <laughs> in, the, um, in the chat window. Yeah, I don't know where Brian is.